Okay, I've had a couple questions about my uh, R&M specialty products onboard shower system I've got on my uh, Forerunner. I just had to put a new radiator in it, so I went ahead and reinstalled the shower while I had the antifreeze all drained down. The heart of the kit here is this heat exchanger that I bought from these guys. Uh, I bought this kit several years ago. As far as I know, it's no longer available, but you should be able to piece something together pretty easy. Uh, with the off the you know, off the shelf part so so what you've got is your heat exchanger and what that does is it takes coolant uh, off your heater hoses and runs it through this exchanger and also runs water through the exchanger um, and you know through thermal transfer heats up your shower water the original kit came with three hoses and a pump and I'll show you how it's all hooked up here so if we start at the inlet side let me show you my little buddy here has got the inlet side. Go ahead and stick it in the water, Carson. That goes down in your water source. It can be a bucket of water. Uh, I carry a five gallon uh, jerry can with water in it. It's what I usually use. Um, but I've also pulled right out of a creek before. Uh, it comes with an adapter just to be able to drop it on the bottom. So, so what you do is you pick up your water there. Goes through this hose. You see the original kit came with a lot of hose. Like I said, you could put this together fairly easy. And then it comes over to a RV style pump. Comes over to an RV style pump. And this is pressure operated, so it'll build up pressure and shut off when it reaches that, that certain pressure. I don't know what that pressure is, but like I said, this is just standard RV pump. So it comes out of the pump, comes down, comes up over here, and it goes through one side of the heat exchanger. Okay, and that's where you, of course, your. Uh, the magic happens where it turns a hot coolant into hot water and it comes down the other side here down this hose and on this hose I've got an end uh, got a basically just a shower adapter let me see that buddy I've got a shower adapter here so one way it's on and then one way it shuts off so that way you know when you're out you don't you don't have to use a lot of water you can shut it off uh, soap up do whatever you need and then uh, rinse off when you're ready so I've already got the engine warmed up I'm gonna fire this thing up and I'll show you how everything works. I'll go ahead and hook the pump up right here. It's just mounted on like a little piece of cutting board basically. So, if I can get this here. It's hard to hold a camera and do this. Okay. Hook that there, hook that there. There's our pump, building up pressure. Let's open this up, get all the air out. It's got a lot to fill here, so there we go. And there we go. And you see once it's going, it's actually got some good pressure. Okay, once we shut the shower head off, pump shuts off once it builds that pressure up so okay what I'm gonna do now is start the truck and uh, we'll heat up some water okay we've got the truck running now so we're circulating coolant um, the AC controls inside the truck need to be on heat um, my truck has a valve on it that controls the amount of flow going to the heater core so I just turn it on full high and that way I know that I'm circulating full coolant through the system so right now, my little boy's spilling water everywhere. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, I'll show you. Uh, I just got this out of the tap outside. It's about 72 degrees. So I'm gonna let it run for just a second and then I'll fill up a cup and see what temperature we've got coming out of the system. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we found out was easiest uh, to do with this. It's coming out. It's pretty hot. So I'm gonna let this run for just a second. Let me get a little cup to put it in. Let me take a new temperature. Okay, I've had this run in about 30 seconds. So let's just, I'm gonna fill up a cup here. See if I can get an accurate temperature reading. Okay, put that 
it back over there and we'll just let that circulate. Okay, so what do we got pretty much coming out of the system? It's about 104, 105 degrees. So that, that's fairly good. Like I said, the truck was already warmed up. Um, so it's pulling right out of that 70 degree bucket and we've got just a little bit above 100 degrees coming out of it right there. So we'll just put that back in there. Let that circulate a minute and I'll explain to you why we're uh, why we're letting it circulate. So we're about 85 degrees in the bucket now, 84, 85 degrees there. So the truck's been running about 10 minutes here. Uh, I just shut the truck off, the pump's still running. That's why I see a little dribble out of the shower head. I don't want to shut off all the way. So what I want to do, the water's warm to the touch, so we're just going to do a temperature check, see. Yeah, about 115 degrees or so, 114, 115, so we're good. So what we would do at this point is just leave the truck shut off. That water will stay warm for a while, and we would take a shower. Uh, I've got a little enclosure to set up and take care of business, and it feels great when you're out in the middle of the desert and you need a break. All right, so let me explain a little bit about why we loop the water back into the bucket and let it get warmed up and then take our shower with the truck uh, shut off. What we found out when we first got this system was when you shut the shower head off to lather up and whatnot, the water sitting inside the heat exchanger there would get super heated because it's just sitting there. So as soon as you turn the shower head back on to rinse off, all that hot water would hit you and it gets hot. So what we decided was, if you just let the water circulate there, get it up to temperature, uh, you can shut the truck off, take a nice comfortable shower, and because you're not still heating the water per se, um, it doesn't get, doesn't get scorching hot on you. It, it maintains that consistent uh, temperature. So that's how we like to use it. So this is my system. If you got any questions, feel free to, to contact me. I'll be glad to do anything I can. Like I said, as far as I know, I tried to get another heat exchanger a couple years ago to actually put on my wife's 4Runner, and they were not available. So I've looked a couple times, but I haven't done it too seriously. I, again, this kit would be really easy to put together. Uh, you just need a heat exchanger, an RV pump, and some hose. So um, if anybody's got a suggestion for a good uh, quality heat exchanger, uh, I'm all ears. Uh, feel free to contact me.